Well, good afternoon to all of you. We are today making new Americans. My heart actually does, it overflows with happiness. Americans are born all over the world. They just haven't come home yet. Raise your right hands and say after me that I will perform work of national importance. That I will perform work of national importance. Under civilian direction. Under civilian direction. When required by the law. When it requires by the law. That I take this obligation freely. And that I will take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Let's give a hand to these brand new Americans. <laughs> Outstanding. Outstanding. All right. I am honored to be the first to wish you a warm welcome as brother and sister Americans. I could not be happier. I am just pleased to death for you and for our country. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe it. I'm so, so excited. I never claim myself a citizen of any country, even though I was born in the Congo. But now, this is the time I can claim myself like I'm a citizen. Right, my brother, so I much. could not be happy for thank you. you. Oh, thank you. Becoming an American citizen meant the world to Edumakano Zito. Here's why. It's hard to say the story. I was born in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, but I didn't get a chance to live in my country because of the war. My mom was a victim of sex harassment and sex abuse in front of my eyes, which is something that I take painful in my life that I don't know how I can take it out. You can see the people that you love are murdered in front of your eyes. My dad and my two sisters was murdered in front of my eyes. Then imagine that's life. It's hard. It hurt. It's troublesome for former refugee Edomakano Zito to think back to his childhood, especially as he holds on tight to these tiny fingers. He loves being a father to his three young children. Zito, as he is often called, and his wife Betty are at peace, knowing their American-born children are much safer than they were as children living in the DRC in Central Africa. There's no hope for tomorrow in my country. Back home, I know the friends of mine. We went to middle school. They're not, I mean, they were murdered. <laughs> if you go back in Congo, oh my goodness, it's blood everywhere. <laughs> The bloodshed from armed conflict, political violence, and corruption has plagued the DRC for decades. The Eastern Congo, where Zito and his wife are from, has been home to the world's deadliest war since World War II. The United Nations says seven million people were murdered from the early 1990s until 2016. 
And we all know if the United Nations gives a statistic like that, we know it's more than 7 million, for sure. Vast mineral wealth, including gold, tantalum, tungsten, and tin, has fueled fighting in the DRC. These minerals are used in cell phones and laptops. Armed groups use the profits from sales for campaigns of violence, while the DRC's people continue to live in extreme poverty. Democratic Republic of the Congo is the reserved country on Earth that has all the mineral and resources that the world need. Diamond, zinc, coltan, all of those minerals involved war in the country. So all the developed country need those resources to make companies run. But for us as Congolese, we never have hope and peace in our own country. A large United Nations force tries to keep the peace, though conflicts continue. Children and families remain in harm's way, with many still facing starvation and sickness. The country's women and girls often become victims of sexual assault and rape. A young Zito went through therapy to help him cope with the violence that devastated his family. He still thinks about his father and his father's advice, especially now that he himself is a father. This is what he used to tell me. The future of any person depends on what you do today. So just focus on the education, make sure that you go to school, you can become someone. Zito was only 10 years old, hoping for a better future, to become that someone. Zito, his mother and younger brother and sister, escaped the Congo and headed to a refugee camp, Nirugusu in Tanzania, joining approximately 150,000 other refugees. The United Nations calls it one of the largest refugee camps in the world. We just live by the grace of God, that's what we said. And we still have hope that one day things may change. It's better to live in a camp than Congo because I mean, in the refugee camp, we were secured with the United Day Commission of Refugees. In the point of security, yes, the camp was much better than the Democratic Republic of Congo. But if you compare the standard of life, you cannot live in a refugee camp. When I say you cannot live, you cannot live. It's, it was hard to live in a refugee camp. They lived in unimaginable conditions for over 15 years. Just imagine you live in a country or in a camp, there is no electricity. There is no proper water that you can drink. We share water with animals. You have to wake up early in the morning, maybe 4, 5 a.m. to get water that you're going to drink. Imagine you live in a place that sometimes it's four to five pounds of rice that you have to eat for two weeks. It's, 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 it's a hard life, and everyone is stressed out, everyone is burnt out. Battling through the hardships, Zito received his high school diploma while in the camp. He also earned a college associate's degree, became a teacher, and a supervisor of a daycare. The camp is also where he met his future wife, Betty. Zito and his family eventually were asked to participate in the refugee resettlement program. The United Nations Refugee Agency oversees the process and identifies cases to be referred to resettlement countries. Refugees do not apply for resettlement themselves. Because of our story, because of the struggle that we have, they decided to give us a chance, a new hope, to move to the United States. The UN Refugee Office refers only the most vulnerable cases, refugees whose lives are in danger in their current host country. According to the UN, less than 1% of the world's refugees are ever resettled. With faith, and as a Christian, we say we have hope in God, we made it. 
When you start the process of resettlement, you don't choose and you don't know where you go. I had a big expectation in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I knew the way we read the United States on books up there, it's, it's like a heaven, so you have everything. Then you get in Milwaukee something different. You know, it's cold, there is snow, you know, and I remember the first time when I saw snow, I was asking, I said myself, what is this? So, you know, it was funny for somehow, but we thank God we are here. I don't think I, I made it because I'm smart, but I believe it's by God's grace. Faith is the only weapon that we have. Without faith, I don't believe that I will be here. Without faith, I don't think I can move forward in my life. Strong faith definitely lifts Zito's soul. and greatly influences his family life. We don't have another legacy to our children besides God. So we teach them how to be kind, how to pray, you know, how to be thankful to other people. A lesson learned and practiced at home and at Sunday services each week. I'm a preacher, I love to preach. Just greet your neighbor and say to him, peace be to you. When I came in 2012, I spoke Swahili, French, Lingala, Kibembe, and Chiluba. No English at all. I quickly learned English at MATC, then I decided to move forward. During his first few years in Milwaukee, Zito did move forward, working as a refugee case manager for Catholic charities and making sure new Congolese refugees in Milwaukee found work and housing in the city. I can help more than somebody has can because I know what they went through. The value of humanity does not exist in Congo for now. The country is not safe. People die every day. Women are sexually abused. They have no value as human being in Congo. I was really, really scared because women were the target for both the way. The people were fighting against the government, all this, I mean, the government soldiers. So I was really, really afraid, but I thank God I was not a victim of sex assault or sex abuse. But my sister was a victim. My beloved brother was murdered on my presence in 1996. He didn't accept the offer from the government to join the army. Yes, they shot him in presence of my eyes and my children. I thanks God uh, on behalf of my family that uh, no one in the family was kidnapped or killed, but we see our neighbors was killed in our presence. We heard the voice of guns at night. Then the people in the village said, uh, this family was attacked, this family was attacked, and when we went there, we found people was murdered. Uh, life for children in Congo at that time was hopeless. Fearless of everything. Um, children was living with no education. I don't think I should be alive if I was in Congo. The way we see in the, I mean, television, the way we listen to the radio, it seemed like our generation 
was ended in the Congo because of the war. Children are the main target. It's crazy. Yeah, we don't know what they want. Appreciating the good life and the little things become even more important for Zito as he keeps an eye on what's happening in the Congo. He reflects on what could have been. Maybe how to be died already. How would I be alive? Meanwhile, Catholic Charities Milwaukee has since ended its refugee resettlement program due to lower arrivals. Zito keeps moving forward while still looking back. He formed the Zito Foundation to help orphaned children and abused women back in the Nirugusu refugee camp. So the idea was, what can I do to help other children like me who was victimized during the war? So when I was in the refugee camp, I came with the ideas to see how I can help other children to overcome. Because most of the children, they have a low self-esteem, um, aggressive behavior, they lost hope, they don't know what they can do, they believe they already failed in life. It's a painful story. Just imagine a child who is 16, experience the murder of the parent, tortured, and now he or she living with someone that does not belong to or related to. So most of those stories, they, they made me crying. I was, I was thinking about my own life when my dad and my other siblings were murdered. So I cried too. His commitment and passion are so strong that he did what some would describe as the unthinkable. Time to go again. Yes. He packed his bags, secured permits from the Tanzanian government. I'm gonna miss you. I'll be back in two weeks. Left his young family behind in Milwaukee. Come in. Oh, oh that is going. Right. Oh. Oh. And journeyed back to the place he so desperately wanted to leave. Cargo, hello, Milwaukee. Just in a few seconds, I'll be taking my flight from Chicago to Turkey by using the Turkish Airlines. Uh, it's gonna be a long flight. But thanks to God, I just landed in Tanzania now. I'm already in the refugee camp. This is how the camp of Nyarugusu look like. Um, they have talented children, who can play and do everything they want to do. Um, I just want to try to give you a feedback, a small feedback of how now the refugee camp look like. I've been in this camp and I left in 2012. This is seven, eight years ago. The, cha the camp has changed. Um, you can see how the camp look, the color of the camp, that's making me smiling again. It's red, everywhere. The camp has changed. When I was in the camp, we was 110,000 refugees. Today they have over 200,000 refugees. So it's a huge camp. I was really amazed to see how huge the camp is, and especially the change of the camp. Construction. A simple game of soccer greeted Zito after first stepping back inside Niragusu. We have a soccer player right now between zone eight and zone nine of the children, and I'll be one of them who will be playing soccer with them. Okay, Johnny. 
Okay, now. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go, go. Get up, go. And now it's a penalty. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. His goal is much bigger than any soccer game. Though seeing kids having fun, even in the toughest situations, offers Zito hope. As does seeing some improvements in the camp. We just wake up at 6 a.m. in the morning. Um, you can see the camp is really quiet. Why? It's because most of the people, they don't have a job to do. So they're still in the house sleeping. But the UNHCR is doing a dramatic job to change this refugee camp. This is not the same camp that I left seven years ago. You can see women are ready in the morning to get water, and everyone is still sleeping. Sometimes people spend more than three to four hours just cleaning. A small closet like this. It's not easy life. It's a mental and physical work all the time. I love you. To end up on the hoo, you know now? Zito brought some of his own changes to the camp. He carried a heavy load back to Niragusu, packing six laptop computers to teach children in the camp how to use the internet. People are really behind in the refugee camp. Um, they don't know much about computer. They don't know much about outsider. Some children thought there is people in a computer where they can talk with them. He also conducted workshops on domestic violence and child abuse because of what most likely happened to the women and children back in the DRC. Zito also says early marriage and pregnancies are huge concerns. People get married at the age of 14, 15, 16, and 17. A young girl at the age of 15, she already have a baby. It is the children, Zito says, who really inspire him to do what he does. They thanks to me. Um, the question was, why did you look back? Why did you think about us? And the answer was simple. It's because I'm part of your life. Zito became a father figure to these two young boys, now young men. Zito couldn't wait for this to happen. <laughs> Very emotional time was when I saw those two children again. I cried, to be honest, when I saw those children again. I cried. <laughs> they are the cause of why I started this foundation. The story of these children is, is really amazing. Deo Kashindi, um, he lost his parents when he was two. And now grandma is the one who's taking care of him with nothing. Absolutely nothing. When I was in the camp, I was the provider myself, buying clothes, shoes, and all the basics need of the child. And we have in other side, Iano, who was raped at the age of 10. When I left the refugee camp, one was 11, the other one was 12. They, um, gave me a gift, two of them at the same time. It's about friendship. This was the gift. To tell me, no matter what I'm doing, I don't have to forget them. Zito has no plans to forget them. It's my dream is to have a big family. Um, even though I lost my dad and other siblings, but I gain other people through the foundation. So I still believe I have a big family, including those children. They cried for the first time when I told them 
So we share the same story. They don't have anyone that they call dad. So the question was, I'm actually young, I can say that way, to be called dad with them. So are we gonna call you dad? I say, yes and no. Whatever you feel. But you wanna call me brother or friends or dad, it's okay with me. His time with these young men and many other refugees quickly ran out. The inevitable and difficult goodbyes came too soon. The children came to me, they hugged me um, to say bye, but they just told me one message. Do not forget us. Even though you go, do not forget us. We live in a condition of life that you know we need to see you again to come back here and to help us. If God will, I will come back and I will do whatever I can to help you. That is, without a doubt, Zito's hope for tomorrow. Thank you.